G'day folks, Rod Moore here from Moore Art School and Learn to Paint TV. Welcome to another exciting episode of Learn to Paint TV. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to paint a little Welsh cottage or farmhouse in a valley surrounded by trees and hills. Step one, of course, is our drawing. So what I've got is, I've got a print out of the photo here. I'll put it up on the screen for you. Uh, but if we just have a quick look at that, got all these trees in the foreground. Then we've got this driveway, hedges, smaller trees around the house. So that's another little section in there. And then from behind those trees, it gets very atmospheric and very misty. Um, you know, another cold day in Wales, probably it was. Um, so it's got some interesting elements to it. And I think we'll like this uh, painting as we go through this. So I've got my canvas here, a 16 by 20, and I've got it in the portrait shape. Okay, that's important. Gonna start off with a little flat brush. So let's get it underway with step one, which is our drawing step. And as I always stress, in the drawing step, what we need to do is really identify where are those big shapes and place them correctly on the canvas. And that's that's really our you know starting point with um, any painting that we do. So I'll just get some water on the little brush, put some blue there and some red. That's just the drawing colour that I like to use, is that sort of mauvey colour. But as it is the drawing, I always like to add a bit of extra water to it, just to thin it back a bit. We don't want it to be super thick paint for our drawing. So a little bit of water in there will just thin that back. Now, there's a little bit in this picture to get it right, in this paint. So I'm just gonna hold this um, initially just to map out a few things. And I think our starting point is to look at where is the cottage sitting? Uh, that cottage is sitting below the halfway mark, okay? And it's just off center. Well, it's kind of right on center. So the halfway mark, I think, is probably going to be about there, okay? Somewhere there, I mean, I'm just guessing, and, and you don't need to get your ruler out for this, just use your best judgment. Um, and that would be roughly the top of the distant tree line there, right? There's nothing too exciting in that. Keep in mind, this is just a little window into this center area here is what we're working on. So based on that, the roof of one side of the farmhouse or cottage goes like that, okay? It's partly obscured in trees. And there's a chimney that sits there, okay? Another, well, the bottom of the roof is there. It's going to meet up with that one there. However, there's trees. So it's a sneaky little view of this farmhouse is what we're looking at here. Trees come up here. Okay, so blocking our view. And then in here, there's another chimney poking through. And then we lose it on the side here. Okay. So there's a little bit of detail in here that we just need to get that right. Um, we see a bit of the wall there, and there's going to be a window in that bit of the wall. Okay, and I'll just I'll mark that in there like so, a little bit heavier. That's a tree there. Okay, then there's a tree that runs there, and then we get a second. This is like an extension that comes from there, runs out there. Okay, and then that's blocked by trees. And that runs there. Now that, it's on a different angle from this line here. And it's slightly lower and it runs out that way. And we get a little bit of glimpse at the wall there. Before that tree runs out there. That one runs down there. And then again we have another window. Around right about there. There's another chimney hiding in the background there. And then that's, that's basically it for the little cottage. Then we have up on the hill at the back where all the sheep play. It's got a hill there. Now this is very atmospheric. It's almost disappearing into the fog in many ways. Um, and there's another hill that runs and I've climbed up those hills and it's really very breathtaking. So we'll have to just make sure we get our value right there. We want that to be really misty and, and um, atmospheric in there. Okay. We've got another row of trees that sits in there, in the, up in the distance. Okay. And then 
we have a foreground tree here, which is uh, kind of a stronger presence. It's going to have some warmer tones in there. Probably the warmest of all will be in that tree and a little bit on these hedges where the sun's catching. And then we have a cypress tree. Now, we haven't done a lot of cypress trees at Moore Art School um, because I don't live in an area that's sort of conducive to that. However, we're going to do our level best to tackle this one here today. <laughs> step two, and step two, as you well know, is our blocking. And our blocking is all about getting our tones right, our values right, and just getting some color down into these big areas. And so that's what we're gonna tackle now. Okay, so I'm sticking with our ultramarine blue, lizard and crimson, and I'll put a little bit of titanium white out. We'll, we'll need some soon. So let us take pretty much all of our blue, a chunk of the red, mix that together. Okay, more red. So because this is our darkest and closest object, as we block it in, we want that to be also our warmest dark. So a bit more red in that than what we might normally do, because when we warm that up with some sun hitting it, uh, it'll work well against the extra red that we put in there now. Or the extra warmth that we put in there when we block it in. So get that in and run that away to the bottom. Okay, good. So we'll come to the what's going to be the cypress tree now. I'll take a bit more of that blue, mix that in. Okay, and I just I've drawn that line fairly harsh and fairly straight, but I don't think we need to keep it that way. Remember, this is just a shadow tone that we're putting in here. And um, it's going to sit under the mid-tone and the highlight tone. So don't be too concerned if it's looking too dark or whatever. I mean, the shadows in these larger trees is going to be dark, especially the right weather conditions. So the definite step here now, one, two, three. We're gonna have a lot of steps in value in this painting, I can guarantee. Now we're still using a mauve tone, which means that uh, there's still a fair bit of red in there. Always remember, if you've done our color mixing course, that uh, you'll, you'll know warm colors come forward, cool colors recede. Go back into the distance. So we want more bluey greens up in the back there. So now we've got a lawn here, and then we've got a row of trees that sit in front of the um, the farmhouses here. So take a bit more blue into that mix now. Let's just try that. If I pop that in there, yeah, I think that's good. I'm going to use both of the same shadow tone to sit in front of all the way along the farmhouses here. So there's more blue, which means it's a cooler shadow tone now. Which is going to make it pop back a little bit into the distance. So let's just see if we can get that to work. So, and I'm going to put a touch of red. So I've got my ultramarine blue yellow ochre. A pinhead of the alizarin crimson. Why? Because I want to grey it back. And when you put that third primary in there, it will grey it back. Go a little bit yellower. Because then it's in the distance. Things in the distance get greyer. The saturation drops away. Okay. Let me just have a little look. Yeah, it might work. I think we'll go a little bit yellower. Yeah, that's a bit better. And get a little bit lighter with it. Now, I 
might just pull it into that darker tone just a little, just to darken it up a little. And let's just see. That could work. I'm just going to block it all in. And then when we've done everything else, we'll come back and say, hey, is that working? Or do we need to address that a bit further? Don't mind getting a little bit of muck in there just to give it a bit of variety. But I'm going to paint it that way to give the impression the hill's running down that way. Okay? I'm not going to paint this up and down. I want details in this um, bit of field or grass. You might recall from our last episode where I did a lot of up and down strokes. That was cool. It was closer to us. We wanted to try and create the effect of wild grasses and so on in that painting. This one, this is a distant hill in the mist. So it doesn't ask us to put any details into it. A little bit of dark, I've got a bit of dark muck up in the end of the brush and if I press hard it's coming out um, on the canvas, which I don't mind. I'm just going to warm it up a little bit, a bit of extra yellow in there as it comes closer to us. So now I think we need a, another version of that but a little bit more on the blue side. That's too blue. What I've just mixed there. And a bit more white in there. Okay, and now I'll pop in some yellow. And more white. I'm mixing up a huge amount of paint here. But I think that'll serve us better than not enough paint in this case, because trying to remix that tone won't be an easy job. But I will just pull some paint out of the brush here. I'll just see if I can scrape some of it on the side. Scoop up a big chunk of that paint and let's just create this distant hill here. Okay, welcome back now to step three, and um, we're going to now focus in on our details, our finishing touches, and our highlights. So, uh, typical sort of process with more art, or the more method is the three-step process. So this is dried up pretty well. It's all looking pretty good. I'm, I'm quite happy with it. And what we're going to do now is I'll focus in on this area in here, and we'll bring all this up. Um, we'll start to work on the cottages, and then the trees around it. And then we'll work out from that and make sure we get everything in the right value range. So I've got my ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, yellow ochre, and some titanium white, and just a, a flat brush, which I'll give a bit of a swish in some water. Now, the cottage, the, the side of the farmhouse or the cottages is white. However, I don't know that I want it to be pure white. So I'm going to put in, notice how much I've got there, a little bit of blue. And I'll pick up around about the same amount of red. So you can see that there. And the blue and the red. Okay. And I'm just going to pop that into the white. I don't want it to be a pure white. Now that's much darker than what I want. So I'm going to have to... Uh, don't pick up as much colour as I just did. Okay. I'm going to have to put a fair bit of white in there to lighten that back. But that's getting closer to the tone. So it's got a little tiny bit of colour in it. But to the eye it's going to look white. Okay, it's going to look white against all the greens and darks and everything that are in there. So I'm just going. I'm just going to use this brush. I've got the paint loaded there, as you can see, and I'm just going to place it where I want it and just drag it down to the treetop, just like so. 
Got that window there. Okay. Like so. Pick up a little bit more paint. I mixed up more paint than what I needed for this, however, I think it's always better to have a little bit more paint mixed than not enough. Pop that into there. Going to put just the tiniest little sneak, sneaky view of it there. That's the roof line there, but there's probably just a little hint of it there. And then the chimneys are going to be white. So, I'll just work those in. So, very good. Now, I'll just get a bit of paper towel, clean that off. The roof colour is a slaty colour. It's a, it's a grey slate. So, how would we get that? Blue and red and white. Okay, now looking at that, that's too red. A bit more blue into it, perhaps. Getting close, I might just put a little pinhead of yellow in there just to grey it. And it probably needs to be a bit lighter than that. But not too light. Okay, so that's the wall colour. This is the roof slate colour. Let's just pop some of that up and see how that looks. We'll run it along the ridge line first. And then I'll run it down. And I think that could work. Just sharpening up those. Uh, top of the roof there. Now that's going to be the, the those angles on the roof there. That's going to be our hardest edge in the whole painting. So just get them nice and sharp. That's what will draw the viewer's eye to it. Or one of the things. It's dipping away a little bit on that side, so I'll just raise that up. Stand back and have a look, and I think that's fine. I'll strengthen the darks around these windows and under the roof line uh, a bit later on. But for now, I think that's working fine. Okay, so the next logical thing then is to work the trees at the back and trees in the front of the uh, farmhouse. Um, got to be a slightly lighter in value at the back and slightly you know, um, darker in value at the front here, a little bit warmer, not too much. Okay, so I'm, I'm only going to use our yellow ochre and blue to get our greens in here. I'll use a punchier yellow for these foreground trees, so that way we create that separation. So I'll get a little bit more white up there because I used more than I planned before. Now the key here is going to be getting just the right tone to match in with that shadow tone. So let's take our blue and our yellow. We know that's our starting point to get a green. Okay, so if I mix those two together, we get a, a green and I can make it a darker green or a lighter green based on how much yellow I add in. However, that is going to be a little bit too strong for out the back there. Oh, maybe not. It has to be obviously darker in value than the field behind it. 
let's just pop in a little bit of white, a tiny little bit of red just to, oh, that's a bit more than a tiny bit of red, um, but to grey it because it's in the distance. And I think the light probably coming from over here. Okay, now it's very, very close to the tone behind it. So because of that, I need to darken it. something a bit more like that yeah, I think that's going to work a bit better so I'll just work that around now this is just our first pass we can always come back and put a little bit more highlight on this row of trees later if we feel it's necessary may not be Just working along the top there, and then I'll start just bringing some of that down. Don't overdo it. I don't want to have this huge row of trees in the back of the cottage because that'll pull our eye a little bit more than what we perhaps are looking for. course as I always say we're going to leave plenty of uh, the shadow tone poking through otherwise there's not a lot of point in putting it down but the natural temptation is to paint it all out in green problem with that we don't get any sense of volume or shape in the tree. Line that off to the edge there. And really, if you, want to, if you want to give things volume and shape, make them have a 3D effect, you need to have a dark, a mid-tone, and a highlight tone at a very minimum. What we're doing in the distance here is really just the dark we've got is that dark purple color and then we've got the um midtone which is what i'm putting over now because it is in the distance though i'll be reluctant to put too much of a highlight on it just block in some a little bit more Now, when you look from at the photo of this, these sort of distant bits of foliage and trees and so on, they're just a big jumble of green and there's not a lot of discernible detail in there. Hence the reason why I'm just dabbing the paint on, I'm not fussing too much to try and paint branches and things, I'm really just... Uh, creating the shapes, basic shapes. If you do that, it'll keep your life a lot easier. As soon as you start trying to paint a branch with twigs and leaves, it becomes difficult. We become almost impossible at this distance anyway. Okay, that's starting to take some shape in there now, which is good. Next is our little strip of grass here, and I think we can probably just use the green we're working on here. Now it's gone a bit murky, so I'll just pick up a bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of cadmium yellow. Okay. Mix that in. And it wants to be a fairly light tone because the ground surface is always going to be lighter in value than the side of a tree because the sun's more likely to hit directly on it. So just keep that in mind. That might just about get us there, I think. Yeah. Now leave a little patch of that red underpainting to shine through. However, what I do know is we can just do the best we can, and but this fan brush is 
creating a an effect which is good probably could have got the same effect with a flat brush but it's good to vary up your brush use and so on as we get further down here overlap it over the roof of the house by having overlapping shapes, you help to create that sense of depth even more. So let's now introduce more Cad Yellow. I've got a fair chunk of it there. So it's gonna really punch up. Obviously we don't want as much of this punchier color on here as what we, um, have of the mid-tone or the shadow. So you gotta pick your spots where we're gonna put it. I was debating whether to put in this, obviously very much a foreground tree that's standing at the front here. And I'm thinking that's probably not a bad idea. And now what I'm gonna do is just load just the tip of the brush, because I've got to really approach this carefully. If I overdo it, then we're going to uh, end up with a mess, okay? So I'm just going to tap it in, and I've got to think about the shapes of the branches and the um, leaves coming down off this tree. And it's gonna come down over that one there. Because it's such a stronger value, it's really going to send everything behind it into the distance. So form a few clusters of these leaves, I think it's going to be the way to approach it. some breathing room for the sky there. Just by adding some branches and things through there. Reaching out further. Okay, well, I think we got there. And uh, I'm quite happy with the way it's come up as a, a demonstration painting. Um, I actually think it'd make a really good finished painting if you, you know, spent a fair bit more time and just slowed down, took your time and worked your way through all these different greens and so on. I think it would work out to be quite a nice finished painting that you could get framed. I love the intimate little look into uh, the little you know, farmhouse inside this valley. Um, and we're standing up here about to drive down in through the winding driveway, which wraps its way around the house. A little bit of smoke in the, in the chimneys adds a bit of life to the painting, right? So it feels like there's people here, people living there. And then we've got this progressive layer of bright, you know, darker value greens, getting a bit lighter and graying off into the distance until it disappears into the skyline with this distant hill. It's really, it's an exercise in controlling your greens, understanding values and painting with aerial perspective into your painting. And uh, if you can have a go at this one and get it reasonably close, then I think you'll learn a lot about good landscape painting. Um, you know, it is a gray misty day, so I've tried to keep it fairly muted, but there's still enough punch in the colors as well to keep it vibrant. So definitely a good one.
to have a play around with and, and have a go at. Hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, make sure you drop by our website at www.learntopaint.tv and moreartschool.com. We'd love to see you there. And we've got plenty of courses and things like that for you. If you want to see the full version of this painting, um, then join our Learn to Paint Club for a $1 trial. And you'll get access to the full version, which is probably going to take an hour and a half to two hours to do. Um, so yeah, but it'll definitely be worth seeing the full version as well. I'll see you next time on Learn to Paint TV. Cheers for now.